Okay, good evening. Welcome to the third in the Legends of Fly Tying series. My name is Fred Dupre and I will be your host tonight and for the next five sessions in November and December. You can get our future dates on the FFI website under FFI Online Season 2. While you're on our website, it would be a great time to either renew your membership or to join the FFI. Your dues to the FFI support the many excellent programs like this one. The prime benefit to this series is our Q&A with the tire. If you wanna ask questions tonight, you can click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your page. Tonight, uh, we have, we're featuring Peggy Brenner. Peg, Peggy resides in New Hampshire, one hour from some of the best saltwater and freshwater fly fishing in New England. She has been tying for over two decades. Her specialty is flies at Fishwell in New England and down to the Florida Keys. Starting with the basic trout and saltwater flies, progressing to classic main streamers at the United Fly Tires, uh, she was also awarded the Dick Nelson Teaching Award in 2019. She ties a select group of, of uh, she has a select group of customers, as well as giving instruction uh, with a focus on ladies' children's classes, presentations, and demonstrations around the country for shops and clubs. Peggy was a featured tire as part of the a Graceful Rise exhibit featuring women of the past, present, and future influential to the world of fly fishing at the American Fly Fishing Museum. Peggy is a board member of the Fly Tying Group. She is the Fly Tying Chair uh, for the Fly Fishing Fair in 2019. She's past president of the International Women Fly Fishers, advisor to the United Fly Tires. Peggy is also a, a member of the several pro staff teams, including Whiting, Partridge, Regal, and several others. She enjoys fishing with, with Jerry, her husband. Uh, welcome, Peggy. Uh, I understand you're going to be tying a gray ghost tonight. Yeah, we are. If you hold on a, a second, I'll get you on the screen. Okay. Uh, tell us about this fly. See, the gray ghost, this is a Carrie Stevens uh, streamer that we're doing. It was developed in Maine in 1924. Um, she's probably one of the most famous ladies that tie flies we have. Let me just, I will share my recipe here. You can... Nope, that's not it. Okay. Um, it's a classic. It actually caught one of the largest brook, it was an award-winning brook trout um, in the mid-20s with uh, Carrie Stevens herself fishing it. It's one of my favorite ones. It's also, if you want to try tying feather wig streamers. It's one of the more complex ones. And if you can tie this one, you can do any of, there are hundreds of patterns you can go on from, from this. And let's see, let me just switch it to our fly. There we go. All right, and that's a gray ghost that I completed before this. Let me just swap out and I'll put a hook in the vise. Could you uh, tell us, Peggy, uh, what kind yeah. of hook that is? This is a partridge hook. It's a, um, this is their heritage streamer. It's nine extra long. Whoops, that's backwards, but, and it's a size four. Okay, size four is a middle of the road size. The twos are a little bit longer shanked and mostly used for um, trolling. This you could cast if you had like a six or a seven weight rod. Um, Let's see, I'm going to start, you start each one, you just cover 
the shank of the hook with, um, I use a light color thread. This is a pale yellow, close to a primrosey color. And I use Danville thread because you can flatten it as you go along. And it's also the company itself is about an hour from where I live. So it's kind of a convenient little thing. It's a family owned business. So you use a light colored. Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. so the. Uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, whoop. There yeah. we go. This is a yellow. Right. That I use. And the reason you could you're use white that is if that's if all you have. A dark yeah. color, it would, the dark would show through the other materials. Yeah. Um, if you use silk for the body, um, when it gets wet, everything it shows through it. So say you use black thread, every little wrap of black thread would show through the silk. Okay, you have all these big splotchy lines. And if you don't cover your whole hook, and you're using silk, the hook will show. Peggy, I think your volume is going out on you. Uh-oh. Yeah, can you um, check your volume button and everything? Let me take a look. Let's see what I have here. Uh, let me go to here. And let's tighten this. Oh, wait a minute, I know where that is. Okay, while we're doing that, uh, we had a question about uh, can we get a recipe up on the screen? I know you were attempting um, to do that earlier. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. Let me go to office here. I've got it hidden in here somewhere. Okay. Let me take that camera out of the way. And let's see. Oops, that's in here. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, this is... Um, I took this out of the book of instructions for the uh, gold award fly. It's the same write up and I just condensed it a little bit. We're gonna use a standard streamer hook. I have a size four. You can use white thread if you want to on the body. I just use yellow out of habit. Peggy, um, do you, yeah. Do you have that sheet that you could put up on the screen? Yeah, oh, I know what I didn't do. Uh, let's get you up here. Wait a minute. There it is. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Where's, oh, here we go. I lost myself there. Okay. All right. Now we have it. Okay. Screen How's share. That? Very good. good. All right. Why don't you explain we... that for us? Okay. Yes. Uh, we I use flat silver tinsel throughout this. Sometimes when you have a tag, you'll use oval tinsel for the tag. And it's just three wraps. For, for the streamers, it's always been flat. Um, the body is orange. This is floss. And this is, there are two colors of Danville orange. Okay. So this lighter color that has like a gold gold orange look to it. Then there's one that's a burnt orange. You want the lighter color. Um, we're gonna use some white bucktail. And I use, the sh I use the shorter bucktail. These are rejects I get from Buzzflies out of New Jersey. He does a lot of saltwater fly tires. And I like this because they're just two inches long. They're just right for the hook. Um, the throat, we're gonna use golden pheasant. Uh, let me get this guy out of the package here. There are two ways to buy this nowadays. This is the whole golden pheasant head, okay? And this is his neck feathers. These tippets you use in um, salmon flies, some, some wet flies. And then this is the crest right here. These are nice long ones. See that nice... You don't want them to be curled. You don't want them to kink around, okay? It's kind of a, and to, you can prepare these. You take this whole thing and you cook it in water like you would a soup or something like that. And then you just pin it on a cork so that it hangs down. And that's what makes this nice straight part, okay? And that's what we want. Whoops. There we go. 
Yeah. Okay. Then we have golden pheasant. And I have two. I use, um, whoops. I use whiting uh, American. Oops, that's backwards. Uh, you use dun, okay? And this is a natural dun, light dun. And see how it's got, so it's like a multicolor, it's mixed, okay? This one here that I'm gonna hold up, this is also light dun, but this is a dyed color. It's one solid color. And I don't like that. I like to have the little bit of a mixture when I'm using these. Just gives a, a little variety. You're actually, you're imitating a minnow, okay? And there's no minnow in nature that's one solid color. Um, we're gonna use silver pheasant for our cheeks. And I've got these all prepared for us. And then for the eye, we're gonna use jungle cock. And this is the whole skin. We're just gonna take off two small eyes off of this and uh, trim them up and put them in, okay? All right, now. Can we, can we get back to full screen? Sure, yeah. Okay. So I wanna take this off. Yeah, there we go. Are we full screen yet? Yes. Yes. Good. And let me just you, get myself better in spot. <laughs> yeah, if you could center the hook, that'd be great. There we go. Good. All right. Now, I'm going to take my tinsel. It comes with two sides. Okay. One side is gold and one is the, um, one is silver. Let's see. There we go. You're tying that tinsel underneath the hook shank, right? Yeah, I hope to always start underneath. It just, when you get into wrapping like the rib, it just makes the ribs start with a nice fresh, fresh spot. Okay, you bring it up and around. This is the tag one, two, three. Then we'll do one, two, three. And then I'm gonna bring my thread back. I'm going to tie this off with two. And then I'm going to bend it back because I'm going to use this same piece of tinsel for my ribbing later on. Okay. Peggy, there's a question. Sure. Uh, What's the go ahead? It's uh, from the audience. Can you even buy jungle cock nowadays? Uh, yes, you can actually. Um, not all fly shops carry it. I buy all mine um, online. And I buy them from a shop called Whitewater Flies in New Jersey. He's in Lafayette. He has an, he's an Orvis uh, fly shop. And he has dealt in feathers for quite a number of years now, probably 15 or 20. And he does a good job. He's good at picking them and he gives you a good grade. He's also reasonably priced. I mean, this one here, this, is, uh, this was $85, okay? and it's in pretty good shape. I'll have to repair some eyes on it, but there are also some really precious ones on there as well. Thank you. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna tie in my floss in the back. I've doubled it up. And I'm gonna bring my thread to the front. And we're gonna put this on. And just be careful that we cover the whole, we don't want to leave any spots out there. The real fast way of doing this is with the rotary vise, which I have misplaced mine someplace. I don't know where it went. Yeah, th that does help. <laughs> That's right, because you can spin them right out. Um, if you were going to tie, like, say, a dozen of these, you would do all the bodies first, okay? Yeah, I was just go ask you from that there. Can you tie... When you tie a, an order of these flies, do you tie yeah. it in in uh, sections? I do. I do sections. I do all the bodies, and I do them a dozen at a time. Like if I'm doing, say, eight dozen of these, I just do twelve at a time. Okay. Do twelve bodies, then I do twelve wings, and then I alternate back and forth, and that just keeps you going. 
it's sort of like you're tying each one individually, but you're not. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. You never want to take more than eight dozen of these. So. <laughs> well, another good thing about tying them in, in sections like that, mm -hmm. it, it helps, I think, at least for me, uh, uh, standardize the quality of the fly. Right. Well, the other, you develop like a little muscle memory in your fingers, and that helps. Um, for instance, I found when I was just starting, I did a lot of swaps because you would tie like a dozen or two dozen or a couple of hundred of the same fly over and over and you perfect that pattern. Right. And that was just a nice way to get started with it. Okay, I'm gonna tie this off, bring my thread up and over. And then I always do a wrap in the front. We'll get this out of the way and then we're gonna make our rib You just try to make them evenly spaced. You keep the tension pretty steady, okay? You just sort of hand it off from one finger to the other and pray you don't let go. Because <laughs> if you let go, it just, it's like a spring and it takes off on you. Okay. Is there a up. standard dip? Uh, distance, the gap between those wraps that you're doing? There's actually, I know in the award flies, they said uh, two times, you want two, two times the tinsel width. Okay, that's how much floss you want showing. Right. It's actually personal preference. Some people put like a quarter inch between each one. Um, it depends, I guess it's like, it depends really if you're going to look at it or not. Okay. Are you going to put this on the wall or are you going to fish it? Right. Um, if you're going to fish it, I actually will change each one slightly. Now we're going to just put a little half hitch there for insurance. And that's our body work. Um, let's see. What did I do with my, my peacock ran away here? Go down. The next uh, materials is going to be what? Uh, we're going to do, now that we've got our ribs on, we're going to do the peacock curl and then a little sparse bundle of white bucktail underneath. Okay. And this is going to fit in. Let me go from the back. It's going to fit right into the curve of the hook, okay, for length. Okay. My peacock has walked, but I have a bunch of it, so. So are you taking that peacock right off the, the stem itself? Yeah, or? I actually, um, I buy these peacock, the whole stick, okay? And right. I buy them at a farm stand up the street from me. They have a couple of peacocks that live there as part of a petting zoo. And I have sort of first dibs on the things. Good, those are so, fresh. That's right. And that's the way to get them. They really, okay, let's put the peacock on first. Just like that. Now, while I'm putting all this stuff underneath, I also need to keep in mind where I'm gonna put my wing, okay? Cause that's my next step. And you don't wanna have a big, a big uh, hole where you have to bundle stuff up, okay? Otherwise, if you put a big lump on the hook, like right here, you'll, your wing won't, sit flat okay it'll stick up okay. you adjust your uh vice Oops, i just yeah i just knocked my uh there, there we go, go. all center, right centered a little bit better please oh, whoops yeah there you go there we go now what i do with um i have my my underbody here it's just a little bit of white um bucktail you don't want to put too much if you put it too heavy the fly will flip over, okay? You don't wanna do that. These ride with the point down and don't iron it or any of that stuff, okay? You wanna get the real deal. While you're tying that on, there's another mm -hmm. question. Sure. Does the long shank of a fly affect the hooking and holding efficiency? 
Not that I've seen. I've had different people say, yes, it does, and yet it doesn't. I've not had a problem. Um, I've lost a few fish, um, but then I think I lose a few every time I go out. So it's kind of a, all right, let me just get this in there. Yeah. Now we can take these scissors, we can cut this guy out. Yeah, and then you just turn it. What you wanna do is turn it so you're looking at the top and make sure you don't have like a lot of stuff sitting around or that your underbelly isn't all on one side, okay? You want everything evenly distributed. Okay, now I have a pair of wings that I made this afternoon but I'm gonna show you guys how to make them. And this is my close wing. Okay, and this is the, the one that goes far on the far side. What you do is you got four feathers here for the wing and the most important measurement in the whole thing is actually to get the tips to line up. Okay, if the tips are uneven on it, it'll spin in the water and it will make your, your uh, tippet and leader will just get wrapped up and it'll make like a rope out of it. So you don't wanna do that. Now these are glued together. I'm gonna sit them down. Another important thing is if you notice, I have the stems from my close side, I have their long, and then these are about half that length. And that's because when you get this on with a couple of wraps, what you wanna do is, um, you use these, it's like a lever, okay, for adjusting the wings. All right, so let me get can, a couple of feathers so here. You glue, glue those, once you uh, pull the fluff off the bottom and measure the right Right, length, yeah. You actually glue those. I glue them together. I actually, it's kind of interesting. You can actually use really thick head cement. Um, Dave's Flex Cement that's been left open for a few days works good. I use something called Fabric Fusion. And you can buy it in like craft stores, Walmart, any place. It's about $3.99 for a couple of tubes of it. And it, what it is, it's designed to put stuff on material. And it's washable and everything else. I thought, well, if it's washable, it, you must be able to use it for this. And it works perfectly fine. So you're gluing, there was a question, you're gluing... Uh, there's four total feathers to each side. Yeah. And you're gluing right. uh, the left side two feathers together and the yep. right side two feathers. Exactly. Together. Okay. There we go. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Now I'll get my two. Can you readjust your camera? Um, whoops. Oh, hold on. I just. Uh, Enter it. There you go. Wait a minute. What did I just do? Whoa, I just got carried away there. Okay. No, nope, there it is. Okay. You push it down a little bit further so they can see. There you go. There you go. All right. Now I have a little room on top too. Okay. When you get your feathers off of the pelt, you're going to have two and you're going to have a lot of fluff. Okay. See how that is on the bottom? So we want to take and peel that back. What I do is I Stack them up. Whoops, I got three here. I have an interloper. Can you do that in the back of the fly so that everybody can see that? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I've got my, I have two feathers and I've stacked them up, okay? Did you, did you, okay, there you go. There we go. Now I'm gonna take and peel off the fluffy stuff. Just go like that, like that. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut off that little piece. Okay. Okay, so there's my two perfectly matched feathers. Whoops, there they are. They're together. And then if you'll notice, what I do is I put, um, I take off a little bit more off the bottom then off of the top. And what that does is it lets it sit right down on the hook. This is gonna go on the side, barely like think 10 and two. 
right about there, okay? And what it does is it just backs up. If you leave that little bottom part on, it just doesn't sit quite right. Okay, then we take Peggy, our- Peggy, a question about where do, sure. you, where do you place the glue on the two feathers? Oh, hold on, that's my next step here. Okay. You put it, let me just get a bodkin here. Okay. Could, could you move that down so I can see? There you go. There you go. Okay, it goes right in between the two feathers, right there on the very, the very little point of the fibers and then on the stem, okay? And then you bring them together. Let me just do this here. I gotta get some glue in there. All right. And again, you're using fabric fusion, right? Fabric fusion, yeah. Yep, that's pretty good stuff. It is, it's, um, I use it to hem clothes and stuff like that as well, multi-use. Okay, there we go. So now I've got these glued together. And what I do is I sit them down on a piece of parchment paper that I've got down on my table. And that's a paper that you use when you're baking. It's known as quick release paper. And that's why it's good for this. You can, um, you can make up a lot of different, different, say wings, okay. And then you just put it, there we go, whoops. I, mean, I can't get it in there. Yep. And that's stuck on just by a little piece of glue, okay? I'm holding the paper up behind the fly. And then you can, when it dries, you can stack these up together and just carry them with you in a little folder or a notebook or something like that. And you don't have to lug all these full pelts with you, especially if you're going to like a lot of different shows. If you're flying, they charge you by the second. Okay. Now we're gonna put um, the next thing right. you're gonna put the wings on. Yeah, next we're gonna put the wings in. And let's see, these are kind of thin, but we'll use them anyway. I'm gonna put a couple of peacock on the top. Now the whole wing, and this is important too, I make my wings about a quarter inch. It's gonna come about a quarter inch behind the bend of the hook. And that's right where this vise starts to slope down and that's about as long as if you make it too long you'll end up with spinning problems again you don't want that when you're fishing it just makes your day pretty bad okay so I've played with my peacock I'm just going to put this on the top just like that and you take a soft wrap okay there cut it there we go all right, now I have my pre-made wings and I'm gonna to switch to black thread right here. Oops, go back. All right, let's see, there we go. Whoops, got a little wrap there too far back. One of the interesting things about these flies in history, when uh, Carrie Stevens made them, she used a lot of glue here and there. She was originally, she made ladies hats and she would glue just about a third of the way back. I mean, the wings were glued in, everything was. Uh, let me get these wild guys out there. Okay. Now, when I put my wings on, I always put the far side first. And then when you're putting your one right up in front of you with your closer one, you can see that background, okay? So we just put it on, hold it like that, do one wrap, and then just keep your finger against the, uh, oops, make sure I get the right one here. There we go. And then just do a couple of soft wraps. And then what you want to do is hang on to it. Make sure you got your backs. Yeah, you know, there you go. Let's fall right in place. Make sure they're sitting on there. Pretty good. Now we can take a few more. Take a good there. Now those aren't going any place. All right. And then we're going to do the cheeks. And when you pick these out, 
they, uh, the silver pheasant is a big bird that you can, I don't think you can actually buy them anymore, but these are the, the flank feathers. And I try to pick two that have the same markings on it. Okay, so both sides are pretty close. And they wanna be the same size, so. There was a question about which side Sorry. goes against the hook. Oh, on the silver pheasant, the sort of the dull side of the feather goes up against the hook. Okay. Okay, and then you put this in so they match a bit. Okay, and then we kind of preen it out a bit so that it looks nice. All right, and then the jungle cock. Yeah. We'll just get two of these and you want two that are the same size, okay? So they wanna come in about the same level on the uh, pelt. And then when you take them off, whoop, I just hit it. See how you have all that fluff on the stem? We're gonna peel all that off and just be pretty careful because there's not a lot of stem there to peel. There we go. Then we'll shorten this up. There we go, that's one. And I'm gonna peel the other one clean. There. Okay, and this is gonna go the back side. What I do is I use the markings on the feather so I get them at the same length, okay? It's kind of a, I mean, some people say, well, the fish is not gonna see both sides at the same time, which is true. Okay, and then we gotta take and clip this. What I do is I use my hook as a guide. Just take it off like that, like that. I think I got one more question. Sure. Uh, the question is, uh, is there a suitable substitute for silver pheasant if it's no longer available? Um, you know, you can actually use for the cheek. You don't have to use silver pheasant represents the gill, but you can use. I'm thinking you could probably use a hen feather. You can also use a guinea fowl. OK, if you can find that. Um, guinea fowl, you can use peacock breast feathers. You know, there's a lot of material. You can use pheasant feathers too, off of a ring neck pheasant. Right. Okay. And just, you want just the same shape and you want it to take up a roughly a third of your fly. Okay. You don't want some big giant thing out there. Okay. Well, I, I have found uh, silver pheasant hmm. uh, in the local fly shop here. So right. it's, avail it's available. It is, sometimes it can be pretty expensive. I mean, I've seen them from $30, which I have a $30 one here that doesn't have a tail, but, and then I've seen them up to 150. Okay, and that's with the tail and everything. There are some salmon flies that you use the tail for. Yeah, the one in the fly shop yes. I saw last week was $60 for the whole pelt. Oh yeah, that's about right. There we go. Let's get that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of solar ease and put it on there. And it'll be held together for life. I kind of, I always said I would never use, you know, the UV resins, but I've, I've gone over to the bend here. Okay, there we go. You've gone over to the dark side. Huh? I've gone to the dark side. I guess that's somebody talked me into it. There we go. And that's the gray ghost. It's actually a nice fishing fly. Um, you can make them bigger than this. This is sort of a modest sized one. Um, you can also put more, you know, if you're gonna put this in a frame, you could put a little bit more bucktail on the bottom, or if you can find it, you can use kid goat. That was the original material. And I think I might have the last of the supply of kid goat. I bought it from, somebody at the uh, FFI fair a couple of years ago, and I got quite a bit of it, but it makes, kid goat has a nice shine to it. All right, let me so see. So do you fish this in, in rivers or lakes or where do you? Uh, we do rivers and lakes. Okay. 
This is a nice spring fly. Do you fish it in the springtime, you said? Yeah. Why, why in the springtime? It's actually, most of these are smelt imitations or oh, okay. minnow. Yeah, and that's when they're out and about. There we go, that's enough of that. I wanna to put too much. There's another question about uh, what yeah. UV glue are you using? Oh, this is Solarese. And um, this is the black one that I happen to use. This is bone dry. Uh, whoops, there it is. Let's get it in front of the... So it's actually a yeah. black color, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then I've got the crazy light here. Yep. There you go. I think we just blinded everybody. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. okay, there we go. That's that set. Yeah, I like the bone dry, and there's a clear one. There's also a bunch of colors that I haven't quite had time to use yet. I have the whole set. Well, it uh, arrived in the mail courtesy of uh, Bruce Corwin is in charge of the Solaries. He does a pro team, you know, with some tying contests and stuff. He does their Facebook page and all their marketing. I've got, got one, nice... last, one last sure. question for you. Yeah. Uh, is the golden pheasant crest optional? Um, do you know, you can actually, I have done them using a little bit of, um, yellow bucktail if you don't have it because uh, golden pheasant crest can be hard to find sometimes and it can be also very expensive okay so i i have done them with just a little tiny strip maybe six fibers of yellow bucktail underneath it doesn't have the shine but it still looks pretty good Then okay. one more question, yeah. is, sure. is the wing longer than you talked about before, or maybe mm -hmm. I heard wrong? Um, I think this wing, I made maybe made it an eighth too long, okay? Okay. Not necessarily too long, but a little bit longer than I usually do. Okay. That's, you can also make this fly in a tandem where you'll have a shorter, I use, um, 3906 mustad hooks for those and you use one for the front to put a wire and then one for the rear and then you do one one wing for the body okay um, what right. i do is i make those about two and a half inches long overall if you, you can make them four inches long you know anything that appeals to you but i just kind of keep them compact well, I figured up. anything that's going to eat a four inch long minnow, I'm not going to be chasing. See, <laughs> it sure looks like a smelt to me, Peggy. Yeah. I really appreciate your expert expertise okay. in these flies. It looks good. All right, good. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Yes. Uh, I think we've answered all the questions. Good. Uh, and we'll see you uh, next week. If you again go to the FFI. Uh, web page and uh, take a look at what the 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 uh, featured tire uh, will be next week and why again while you're at it uh, if you haven't renewed your membership please do thanks everybody and we'll good evening okay thank you